Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. It's time. It is, as you can see right here, the final campaign. We are about to make the assault on Washington, D.C. And uh, I had a request uh, to go over each of the units and kind of talk a little bit about what their history was. And I am going to do that, but I'm going to do that after I finish the campaign. So I'm going to finish this final battle of D.C. It's probably going to be several parts. And I'm going to take some time just to kind of recap, talk about things. I'll look at some of this information like you see here about the total losses, total kills. Get into that a little more, but I want to finish the campaign first. So, without further ado, we're going to dive right into that. So I want to give a shout out to Chris Marciniak, who is the um, inspiration behind the Paper Collar Brigade and who rightly pointed out to me that when I was talking in one of my previous episodes, and I think it was in the Union campaign at Shiloh, uh, I was talking about Standards Brigade, which was a Vermont brigade at Gettysburg, who came out on the flank during Pickett's charge and, and helped repulse that attack with some flanking fire. Uh, hadn't realized that they were the Paper Collar Brigade, but they are, in fact, that same unit. And uh, there was only major battle they fought in. So uh, just thank, thank you, Chris, for that information. Thanks again for being a supporter of this page and for being one of my patrons. And I'll be continuing to do those shout-outs as we go along. Let's go ahead and dive in. This is going to take a while, fighting this battle, and it's going to happen in several parts. So, just kind of, the first things first here, we're going to have to set up the attack. Uh, I, you have to have a left-flanking attack, but I don't feel like that's the wisest way to go when it comes to attacking these southern positions, uh, more southernmost positions. Uh, so what I'm choosing to do instead is put as few brigades as possible there, and putting the main part of that attack over on the right flank. And then my main attacks, of course, are going to come here with, uh, uh, we'll go that way and here. And so, as you can see, that gives me a total of 96,553 men. I think that's the largest army I've taken into the field in any battle. And I'm going to need every single one of those men to make this happen. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. The first part is going to be pretty boring and pretty slow because... I'm not actually going to engage right off the bat with the enemy. I'm going to get myself into position with these first 15 brigades. And then I'm actually going to wait for the next part of the assault to open up so that I can uh, be in a better position to do this. So what I'm actually going to do is kind of drop out here and I will come back when I'm ready to launch my attack on the first two forts, which are Fort DeRussey and Fort Stevens. So we'll see you shortly. All right, well, welcome back. Um, we're starting our advance now. This is kind of phase two of the battle. And we're going to make our first contact with the enemy here outside of Fort Stevens. And we'll try to push push through them pretty quickly here. My goal here is um, I really, really don't need to take these forts quickly. Uh, the main thing here is I want to try and inflict as much damage on his army as I can. So there are fewer defenders available, not only to hold the forts, but also to counterattack once I take them. So I'm going to push through these guys here, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop short, probably somewhere right about here, just out of his artillery range if I can. And then I'll make my move on Fort DeRussey. The one mistake I don't want to make is I don't want to feel like I'm in a rush to take these forts because I'm really not. This is a long battle. There's plenty of time to take these objectives. There's no reason to try to hurry up and rush them. I've got a decent advantage in manpower, about two to one right now, and I know he'll get some reinforcements. In fact, I think he gets them probably any time now, probably in the next half hour or so, he'll get some reinforcements. But my main thing is I'm just going to try to be as deliberate as I can. Keep my army together. Up, Cub. Don't get flanked. And 
Interesting that I issued a hold order and they're not holding. Stop! All right, we'll move up the guns. Okay. I want to start making my move now over here. Get my guns up in range. I've got 20 pounders, 24 pounders, some big heavy guns for this attack. Eh, go that way. Heavy artillery reinforcing the enemy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up with these 24-pounders. Same thing with Garfield here. Ah. I want to hold the Orphan Brigade back. I want some of these less experienced units to lead this attack. up to the edge of these woods but not too much further for now I'm going to start swinging around here. I'll need to cover my flanks, but I want to swing around and hit this fort from the rear if I can. The nice thing is, because there's so many parts to this battle, I have plenty of time where I don't have to feel like I have to micromanage both assaults at the same time. I can kind of hold back here a little bit. In fact, I'm going to hold these guys right here. Move up my guns. I always forget my general. All right, Louisiana Tigers are getting lit up because they're out in the open in front of this fort. All right, I don't know how close. Uh, it doesn't look like he's got any infantry too close here. So I want to try and send in my cavalry to take out these two batteries.
All right, Louisiana Tigers already got routed before they even got there. Probably a mistake on my part that I didn't have more support. I kind of went in a little piecemeal there. Wasn't the best coordinated assault I've ever had. All right, looks like we destroyed both those batteries. Bring Paper Collar Brigade back, Virginia Brigade back. Start bringing up these heavy guns. All right, I'm gonna pause real quick. I just wanna go back and look at the situation over here, make sure I'm not missing anything that I should, shouldn't be missing. All right, I think we're good. Cobb's Legion, they, they lost their commander, so they're hurting a little bit there, but they're in cover, they should be okay. All right, let's focus on taking Fort DeRussey. All right, I think we're good here. Let's go ahead and start getting a defensive line set up because he will try to counterattack. All right. Now we'll kind of reassess the situation. I'm not going to go after Fort Stevens quite yet. I'm going to re kind of uh, regroup a little bit. Start trying to inflict some casualties now that I've taken one of the forts. AP Hill wounded. Looking at the situation here, I'm looking at about a 31,000 man advantage. So I'm in pretty good shape there. I want to drive off these guys here. And once I get this kind of in a solid position, then I'll start thinking about my next phase. Looks like he's pulled back from the defenses here. So I think we can start advancing. Oh, you know what? He looks to be making a shift over towards the fort. Maybe I'll allow him to do that. Before I go after the fort. So now we're in a good position where we're attacking from the fortifications and he's sending units at me. So now I get to be the one on the defensive a little bit.
Not entirely sure what he's thinking right now. We'll go ahead and advance slowly here. No, he's still making advances on my on my right. I'm gonna take out this battery real quick here. And then I'll halt Cobb's Legion. And they're gone. Alright, now we just gotta kinda of, kinda of pull them back here a little bit. So like I said, I'm just going to advance slowly. The only thing that happens if I were to take Fort Stevens now is it would just trigger the next part of the mission a little sooner. But I'm in no hurry to do that. So I'll kind of let this tick out here. And once I've regrouped and I'm ready for the next phase here, I'll come on back with the assault on Fort Stevens. Okay, here comes phase three. We're now on to the attack. Uh, it opens up the ability now to attack Fort Slocum, which is all the way down here. Uh, again, do not need to take it in this phase of the battle. There's plenty of time to make that happen. The only thing that taking the fort now does is it triggers the next phase. So if you want to move things along faster, you certainly can make that attack. But I am very much of the attitude of hurry up and wait right now. Especially as long as he's throwing troops at me, I'm not inclined to be in a rush to go after him. Right now he's got about 26,000 men all the way across the field. So I'm going to start trying to drive him out of these fortifications over here a little bit. I'll hold the position over here. And then I'll go ahead and advance on Fort Stevens. And I'm going to hold a few units over here just because. Some of these units are still in run mode from before. There's not a whole lot in Fort Stevens right now. I'll start moving my guns, just anticipating that I'm going to take the fort and I'll want to be able to get them in there.
And it looks like Haney got a little further than I wanted him to there. So there's some Yankee Cavalry coming up here. Luckily, I was somewhat prepared for that. I got a unit in my rear over here. Going to have to go deal with them. That's what Cavalry's for. All right, we're going to send over some help here. In hindsight, I may, may have been better off to take the fort and then fire on these positions rather than trying to take both places at once. Whoa, Weed, where are you going, buddy? Looks like for the most part there not much happening over here. There are still a few brigades trying to engage. Let's see if I can get over here and take out this stray cavalry unit. Still two hours to go. Again, I'm gonna take the fort, clean up kind of the mess around here deal with the fortifications on either side, let my army regroup before I go worrying about pressing ahead to Fort Slocum. He's down to just 23,000 men. We both have lost quite a bit. But now I hold two of the forts. It makes my job a little easier. Oh man, just lost uh, Hexamer. He's been with me pretty much since the beginning of the war, I believe. Tough time to die that late in the, in the campaign. Reminds me of A.P. Hill, who uh, in real life was one of those generals who had been with Lee, been with the army pretty much since the beginning, and gets killed just a couple of days before the end of the war. So I'm, gonna, I'm still going to hold these guys back here. I don't want to advance on this strong position. I want to let him lose a lot of men trying to re reclaim this fort if I can. I guess we'll go ahead and start moving some units up here a little bit. There we go, we're starting to drive them out of here now. Alright, we'll just uh, kind of win the casualty battle here for a little while. Another general killed, jeez. I 
I'm in good position here. I've got the, the advantage. I've got the fortifications. He's just going to lose a lot of men. Jeez. Not entirely sure why these units are being routed from this position here. My goodness. Every unit I put in this corner fortification. I guess maybe we'll just put somebody up there. Must just be how they're spread out. starting to bring everybody over this way now. See if we can catch some of them as they do. Well, the nice thing is my first corps only lost 15%, second corps 20%, but I know he's lost just as many. And a higher percentage in his case. Alright, we'll speed this along. We'll take it to the end of this phase of the battle before we start our attack on Fort Slocum. And I'll probably wrap it up right here for the first episode. Plenty more fighting to do here. Alright, so he's starting to fall back to this next line here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing these guys around here if I can. I don't know how far down his defense goes. But I'll try to swing around, break through these defenses, and kind of roll them up and roll everybody over toward Fort Slocum. He's down to just 17,000 men now. I'm trying not to be too aggressive because I know there's the big Union counterattack that follows this whole battle taking Washington, so I need to try and keep my army as intact as I can. Come up to the edge of these woods here. Just kind of build a solid line right there. I 
And that's where we'll wrap up the first episode. So I welcome your input. Um, I'm probably going to do all of this battle today, uh, though I may not upload all of the videos today. So uh, as you're seeing this and as you see things, I might have a little bit of time, but uh, for the most part, I probably will have already played the next part by the time you see it. But I still welcome your comments, your observations, anything that might help me or any other gamers who are watching this in terms of how to fight this battle and win and be effective with it. So as always, thanks for watching. I am going to be uploading a channel update sometime either today, Monday, or tomorrow on Tuesday with another question of the week for you. Um, I appreciate all those responses to that as well. If you did that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, I'd appreciate that a lot. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.